Hello! In this video, I'm going to be looking at the formation of spinal nerves and the somatic nerve fibres that travel within them. To do that, I'll be drawing these structures out, and I'd recommend that you draw along with me. If you're not a confident artist, please don't worry, I'll be with you every step of the way, like a neuroanatomical Neil Buchanan telling you what to draw and where to draw it. So if you're ready, let's make a start. First, let's start with our spinal nerve. These are the nerves we see leaving the vertebral column at every level and heading out into the body. To draw this, I'm going to imagine we've taken a transverse section through the spinal cord and we're looking down at it from above. We'll have the posterior aspect here and the anterior aspect here. I'll start by drawing the left half of the spinal cord, then add some shading for the grey matter in the centre. Next, I need to draw the structures that leave the spinal cord to form the spinal nerve. Just like a tree, the spinal nerve starts with roots, and we have one at the front and one at the back. Now, in neuroanatomy, we tend not to use the terms anterior and posterior. Instead, we use ventral and dorsal. For this anterior root will be our ventral root, and the posterior root will be our dorsal root. You can just draw the ventral root of a straight line, but when you draw this dorsal root, make sure to add a bulge about halfway along. This is the dorsal root ganglion, and I'll come back to why we have this later on. Our ventral and dorsal roots come together and form the spinal nerve. This heads away from the spinal cord, and if it does so, it leaves the protection of the bony vertebral canal. This means everything here is safely enclosed in the bones of the spine, but everything distal to this point is out in the body and more exposed to damage. Once past the vertebra, the spinal nerve will divide into two branches. So again, the spinal nerve is just like a tree, with roots at one end and branches at the other. We have a small posterior branch that supplies the skin and muscles of the back, and then a large anterior branch that supplies everything else. The Latin word for branch is ramus, so we'll call this structure at the back our dorsal ramus, and the larger branch at the front will be the ventral ramus. If you want to talk about both of them, we call them the rami. And that's it, we've drawn our spinal nerve, now let's look at the somatic nerve fibres within it. The somatic nervous system is our voluntary nervous system, and it consists of two types of fibres. Efferent fibres exit the spinal cord and control our skeletal muscles. Afferent fibres arrive back at the spinal cord and deliver sensory information from the skin. First, let's draw our efferent fibres. These originate as cell bodies in the ventral horn of the grey matter before heading out to the spinal nerve via the ventral root. Here, the nerve fibres split, with some supplying muscles in the back, but most of them heading anteriorly via the ventral ramus. The afferent supply travels in the opposite direction, heading back to the spinal cord. We'll have sensory fibres from the back in the dorsal ramus, and sensory fibres from everywhere else in the ventral ramus. These come together in the spinal nerve and travel back to the spinal cord via the dorsal root. The final thing to add are the cell bodies of the afferent fibres, and we'll find these just here. This cluster of afferent cell bodies forms the bulge in the nerve that's known as the dorsal root ganglion. So, that's how the somatic nerve fibres travel within the nerve. Let's review the major points of what we've drawn. The somatic nerves are divided into efferent motor fibres and afferent sensory fibres. The rami and spinal nerve contain a mix of efferent and afferent fibres, but the roots only contain one or the other. The ventral root contains efferent fibres, and the dorsal root contains afferent fibres. So, if you're happy with that, let's look at how damage to these structures could prevent clinically. If we damage a spinal nerve, what symptoms will we see? Well, the symptoms of nerve damage will always be distal to the site of the damage. Efferent impulses can't get out past the injury, and afferent impulses are unable to return. In this case, it means we'll lose all of the motor and sensory innovation in both rami. If a single ramus is damaged, we'd lose motor and sensory supply in that ramus, but the other one would be unaffected. 
Now what about damage at the proximal end, in the root instead of the rami? If we damage the ventral root, we'll lose all efferent innovation beyond that point, for both rami lose their motor supply, but will have no loss of sensation. If the dorsal root was damaged, we'd see the opposite. No sensory information would be able to return from the rami, but their motor function would be normal. That's the anatomy of our spinal nerve and somatic nervous system. If you have any questions, please get in touch. And if you want to review the sympathetic nervous system, you can follow the link here. But otherwise, thank you for watching, and I'll hopefully see you again soon. Cheers.